Wall Street used to be dominated by slick-haired dealmakers, coke-fueled stockbrokers, and Patagonia-vested finance bros with their rich daddies. And now it's run by nerds. Literal f***ing nerds. Geeks, bruv. PhDs in maths, physics, and computer science, the kinds of people who strike fear in their opposition at Rubik's Cube competitions. These nerds write trading algorithms in Python, run market simulations in C++, and make so much money that even they will steal your girl. But what do they actually do? How the fuck do they make so much money? Why are they so much better at trading than humans? And how do you go from a socially awkward autistic mathlete to socially awkward autistic billionaire? Well, thank God for me, because I'm about to tell you. That's my quant. Your what? My quantitative. A quant is a nerd who uses advanced maths, stats, and computer science to predict, trade, and manipulate financial markets in order to make massive money. Most quants work at hedge funds, investment banks, or proprietary trading firms, places like Citadel, Renaissance Technologies, Two Sigma, and Jane Street. And these guys pay. Top quant firms will pay fresh grads 200 to 400k straight out of uni. Sometimes even more if you've got that perfect combination of autism and genius. And again, same as I said in my hedge fund video, this is just the salary. The foreplay. The entree. The main course is the bonus. If your code prints cash, you're eating like a king. But now, real talk. What do they actually do? They use mathematics, statistics, computer science to uh, make money on the stock markets. Mm. Shut up, nerd. I'll take it from here. To start off, you need to know what different kinds of quants there are. It's the same as asking what does a doctor do? Well, are we talking about the ones that cut people open? The ones that stick their finger in your ass? Or the ones that stare at vaginas all day? You see, there's no one answer. And the same's true for our nerds on the street. So let's dive in. First up, we've got the quantitative researcher. These guys are the creative nerds. They come up with ways to beat the market with maths. You can think of them as financial scientists. They cook up some idea, like using satellite images of car parks to figure out how good a quarter Walmart's going to have, or tracking cardboard box sales across the country and inferring how many deliveries FedEx is going to make this year. They gather the relevant data, and then they test their hypotheses. And this testing is known as backtesting, where you have an algorithmal trading formula and you test its validity on historical data. Did the strategy work? No? Then get the f back to work. Oh, it did work. Great, pass it on to the next nerd in the production line. Meet the quantitative developer. The previous nerd was the architect. This guy's the engineer. And more specifically, this guy's the computer whiz. These guys turn the tested strategies into actual strategies that get deployed in the real world. They go and take the dog shit code that the research nerds wrote and turn it into production grade, diamond quality, AAA rated, gold standard money printing magic. Part of this magic making process is making sure it's fast and literally every microsecond counts. Making sure it's scalable, so it can handle heavy loads, and making sure it can run 24-7. So, the money printer has started. Now it's time to sit back, sip margaritas, and let the money pour in, right? Wrong. Meet nerd three, the quant trader. Imagine if Warren Buffett and some nerdy Asian lady had a baby. He would be a quant trader. These chads monitor the models, understand what they're doing in real time, and manually intervene if necessary. You can imagine the kinds of things models wouldn't account for. Things like COVID, Trump's tariffs, building demolitions, or a bunch of Reddit mids running up GameStop. And finally, we've reached Young, the risk quant. These guys have had to come first in a national maths competition. I got second in that national math competition. Rather than make money, their job is to not lose money. These geeks simulate worst case scenarios and build frameworks to try and catch things before they blow up. Okay, so quick recap. We've got the maths nerds who come up with ideas, we've got the computer nerds who build the algos, we've got the hybrid nerds who wear Patagonia vests and have autism, and then we've got Zhang. Now, how do these nerds actually do what they do? The yin and yang of quant finance. Yin equals maths, yang equals computer science. Let's focus on the yin first. First up, we've got linear algebra, which is used for portfolio optimization, pricing models, and pretty much anything involving matrix manipulation which is everything. Then we've got probability and statistics, the bread and butter, which is used for risk modeling, forecasting, machine learning, and giving college kids nightmares and depression. Third, we have calculus, specifically stochastic calculus. I don't know what the f*** that means. If you want to know what it means, Google it yourself. But before you go researching, you should know that this guy on Reddit says we don't use stochastic modeling anymore. And since he's the top comment on this post, you know he's 100% correct. So we're actually going to cross this off the list. If you've never heard of these before, unless you're under the age of 15, you're never going to be a quant. Plain and simple, you're either good at maths or you're not a quant. Now for the yang. Which programming languages do these guys use? First up, we've got Python. Anyone could have guessed this. Great for prototyping, backtesting, and data analysis with a bunch of great libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Scikit-Learn. Then we've got trusty old C++. When you need speed, 
You've got to ditch Python and build everything from the ground up. Then you've got R, basically just Excel on steroids, mainly used by a bunch of old school academics and research nerds though. And then you're obviously going to need some SQL or SQL to query all your data. Now, I bet there's some of you nerds watching this video right now wanting to learn how to get these skills. Well, here's a bunch of the best books you can read to help you become a quant. These books will help you learn how to code. This book will help you understand options. This book is a biography on the best quant ever. This book will tell you all about high frequency trading. These books are when you know how to code and are ready to go deeper. Buy these books and start learning. There's a massive difference between a rich nerd and a nerd. You're wrong! I've also linked some of my favorite YouTube videos and accounts related to quant finance, be sure to check them out. Now you know what skills you need, but how do you actually become a quant? Here's a quick question you can ask yourself to see if you have what it takes to be a quant. Do you have two or more of these traits? A. Are you Asian? B. Do you have autism? C. Do you have Asperger's? And D. Are you autistic? I promise you, if you don't have at least two of these traits, you will get absolutely crushed by someone who does. I'm obviously joking. At an absolute minimum, you need a degree in something male-dominated and nerdy as fuck. Pick from these. Now, I'm not saying an undergrad isn't enough, but quite a few quants have masters or PhDs. In saying this, some might argue that real experience and projects offer far more value to your employer than another degree. So start building shit. Backtest a trading strategy on historical data. Enter a Kaggle competition. Sign up to Quant Connect and start building. Another idea? Build a trading algorithm around Kaushi. Kaushi is a website that's kind of like if you crossed a betting site with the stock market. But instead of betting on sports roulette like a degenerate, you're making money on real world events and across basically anything you want. So will Trump buy at least part of Greenland? Who's going to be the next Pope? What's the highest temperature in New York City tomorrow? When's ChatGPT5 going to drop? And the question we've all been asking for literally a decade, when will GTA 6 finally be released? Now, one of the major benefits of building a trading algo around Kaushi is that you're not competing with hedge funds on the stock market that have billions of dollars at stake. So if you get your algo right, there's actually a chance you might make some really good money while displaying a clear understanding of the fundamental aspects of what it's like to be a quant. Here's how you might do it. Start off by using the API to pull the current live market data. You want to pull info like contract title, current yes and no prices, volume, expiry date, and if available, historical outcomes. Now you need to grab some external data sets. So maybe you like the economics tab and you need to pull some data from Fred. Or maybe you're after weather and geopolitical data, which you might pull from the NOAA, Kaggle data sets, or maybe even scraping Google News headlines. Then it's time to build your prediction model. Let's say you're wanting to use news headlines and Twitter posts to figure out sentiment around Bitcoin's price. You might plug in OpenAI's API to determine sentiment across multiple data points. Or maybe you'll use linear regression and logistic regression to determine binary outcomes for things like inflation rates. Now it's time to backtest your model's trades. Use your historical Cauchy data that you collected in step one to simulate trades. And finally, package nicely so you can show people. Push the project to GitHub, write a short blog post, or make a YouTube video detailing the entire process. Maybe even deploy a full application to a website publishing your predictions. This is the kind of project that'd help you stand out. But anyways, make sure to check Kaushi out and use the link in the description because you'll get an extra $20 when you trade 100. Big thanks to Kaushi for supporting the channel. Now, one question you might have is, how to split up the learning of skills? Which skills to focus on first or most? Well, it depends on what kind of quant you're wanting to be. Imagine you're playing a video game and you've got 10 XP points to split across these three areas, maths, coding, and finance. If you're wanting to be a researcher, you definitely want to max out mathematics, probably specializing in something like statistics. If you're wanting to be a developer, then you obviously need to max out coding, probably with a very heavy focus on C++ while still being pretty fantastic at Python. If you're wanting to be a trader, then it's maxing out finance. Start networking, make connections, learn the ins and outs of industries, and gain the deepest understanding possible of the underlying financial system behind your trades. Now, who are the big dogs in this crazy world of math nerds taking billion dollar gambles? If you've already watched my hedge fund video, sorry for the repetition, but you literally cannot mention Quant and not talk about the legend Jim Simons. I could make an entire video on this guy. Ex-NSA codebreaker during the Cold War, mathematics PhD and professor at Stony Brook University, wrote his dissertation on some bullshit about topology, and then decided at 40 to leave academia and start making some real cash. His fund, Renaissance Technologies, has earned average annual returns triple the size of Warren Buffett's for around 40 years now. He is the gangster, the king, the Don of Wall Street. Then you've got these other two gangsters, David Siegel and John Overdeck, who founded Two Sigma. Siegel was building computers at like 12, 
and has degrees in computer science and engineering, while Overdeck is a Stanford maths prodigy and won a silver medal in the International Nerd Olympics. Two Sigma now manages over $60 billion in assets. Anyways, if you want to know more about these guys or other Wall Street nerds, go Google them yourselves. I'm sick of talking about these rich nerdy fuckers while I'm sitting here poor as shit. Thank you for watching the video. I'm going to pump out far more in the future. Stick around, keep watching, like, comment, and subscribe. I love you all.